Joining me now to discuss the latest from the decision desk is no stranger to Trump world and all that it entails. Anthony Scaramucci, former Trump White House communications director turned sharp Trump critic. He also founded Skybridge Capital up there on the street. Mooch, thanks for being here. What is Wall Street even interpreting 2024 on the political front? Because it seems like there's this sense of unpredictability in the political landscape. Well, listen, it's it's painful for me to admit this, but uh, Wall Street is basically nonchalant to this election. I think they viewed Donald Trump by and large as benign to somewhat beneficial to the economy and business, uh, despite the fact that he spent $7.8 trillion of additional deficit spending. Uh, and I think that they're viewing this as a Fed-driven market more than it is a Democratic or Republican presidency market. So uh, that's unfortunate because... As uh, President Biden is pointing out, uh, Mr. Trump is a great risk to the institutions of America. And, you know, I think we if we lose any of those cherished institutions, it's ultimately really bad for business. So it's a it's a great irony that people are, aren't focused enough on what's at stake here. Anthony, if Donald Trump ends up being the standard bearer for the Republican Party, and all the polls suggest that that's what's going to happen, do you think that there will be a viable third choice or an alternative choice uh, that's a viable candidacy to challenge the status quo of a Trump-Biden rematch? No is the short answer, and I'll just be brief in explaining why. In 1992, uh, Ross Perot, a jug eared billionaire got 19.9% of the vote. And that scared the daylights out of the two parties. And so they tightened their duopoly on the system and they've made it barely impossible for a third party candidate to emerge. There's too much regulation, too many different uh, uh, hoops that these people have to jump through. And of course they don't have the mechanisms or the operations of the big party movements. So. Uh, look, America is uh, dissatisfied with these parties. Uh, Forty plus percent of the Americans registered to vote are now independent. So that's the, the top draw. It's then followed by the Democrats and the Republicans obviously have the smallest number of registrations. But I just don't see anybody being able to break that duopoly right now. Uh, maybe a few years from now, uh, but not right now. You're head of the Davos for the World Economic Forum. Uh, and one of the big cryptocurrency stories here in Washington, D.C., anticipated in the next day or two is whether or not a crypto will be allowed in the ETF market. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, anticipated to make their decision. You've garnered a lot of attention on Twitter. You say it's a done deal. Why do you say that? Well, they lost the court case. And so ultimately, uh, Gary Gensler, despite being an acolyte of Elizabeth Warren, who I think Elizabeth Warren wasn't actually Pocahontas, but she's probably like George Washington's grandfather. She's this ancient relic from a past, uh, doesn't understand crypto. And despite her so-called progressive status uh, and supposedly is for the unbanked, uh, she doesn't like crypto, even though things like Bitcoin benefit those people. Um, you know, those two people don't like crypto, but they lost the big court case. And so it's going to force the hand of the SEC to allow for this uh, cash ETF to take place. I predict the trading announcement will be on the 10th of January. That's when the deadline is. Uh, of course, if they for some reason rug pull the industry, there'll be 25 or 30 lawsuits. And I don't think the D.C. Circuit is going to think kindly of those that that situation with the SEC because they already lost that case and then they made a decision not to appeal it to the Supreme Court. So so I think it happens. I think it'll be a great day for uh, uh, the, the financial services community and financial services tech in general. Uh, and of course, uh, Skybridge, you know, we obviously own a lot of Bitcoin, full disclosure. We own things like Solana and I have a very large position in these digital assets in our fund. And, you know, we, we made these investments three years ago. Uh, so we were a little ahead of the curve there. and We took on heavy uh, criticism for that, particularly in the 2022 bear market. Well, specifically with FTX and, and Sam Bankman-Fried, and there was all of this lack of trust in the industry. So how might this be a turning point in restoring trust back to the market, especially once you get ETFs involved, which will, as you know better than anyone, really expand the marketplace for these types of financial products? 
Yes, I think there's a watershed moment for Bitcoin in particular, because if you've got the authorization to have a cash ETF and companies like BlackRock and Fidelity, some of the largest asset managers in the world are going in that direction, then it makes it acceptable to expand your portfolio into things like Bitcoin. So even a 1% allocation to something like Bitcoin across uh, institutions and individuals, high net worth individuals, et cetera, would be a big boon for uh, for Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin. Uh, you mentioned the FTX situation and the lack of trust in the system. Unfortunately, when you have these new technologies that are advancing, you do get some levels of charlatanism. We saw that with the railroads. We saw that in telecom. Uh, you pick the industry. It is rife, unfortunately, with bad actors. Uh, but I think this is a step in the right direction because some of the largest, most regulated players on Wall Street will be involved with this. So I think it'll make it safer for the uh, the general public. You know, Anthony, you started this interview by talking about uh, the Federal Reserve and Fed Chairman Jay Powell and what he is going to do with rates, which the market is anticipating at the end of this quarter uh, or into the second quarter in terms of a reduction in the rates. But there's a lot of talk about the Federal Reserve and a digital currency. What's the update on the U.S. dollar and the digital currency that the Fed is looking into? So listen, it's interesting. The Fed, uh, they wrote a white paper in in July of 2017. I remember that because I was in the uh, the White House when it happened. And since I was only there for 11 days, I had very vivid, <laughs> had very vivid memories of that. And so I think I was presented that paper on a Wednesday. And the reason I know that, Kev, is I was only there for one Wednesday. So I <laughs> sort of know that it was a Wednesday. But, but um, it's six, seven years later. Nothing has happened, and I predict nothing is going to happen. Um, there are still libertarian impulses inside the Fed and in and around the American government, and I don't think they like the idea of bringing out a digital dollar that's sponsored by the Fed. I think a safer route, at least for now, will be uh, using things like Circle or things like Tether, which are stable coins that are denominated in U.S. dollars that are on the blockchain. Um, I think it's going to stay there for now. There's just too many people in Washington that don't understand it, and a result of which I think it's going to slow down the adoption process. Last question for you, Anthony Scaramucci. You've got a vintage uh, comic book framed in the shot behind you. I'm a big comic book guy, so I, I got to ask you, what's the story yeah. behind that? Okay, so if you look closely, that's actually my wife and I sitting next to Batman and Terra. Ter Terry Savalas from Kojak, uh, Sonny Bono is actually talking to me. Um, and that is actually a iteration of a 1976 comic. It was Superman versus Muhammad Ali. But if you can read it closely, it says Superboy versus Muhammad Ali. I made it Superboy because the person that uh, did that for me is Mike Grell. He's the legendary 70s uh, a comic artist that did all of the Superboy comics was when I was a kid growing up. And so uh, if you look really closely, and I'll send you a picture of it, Kevin, uh, Jack Kennedy is in the audience, uh, but so is Marilyn Monroe, one of his mistresses, and so is Jackie Kennedy. Lucille Ball, Ronald Reagan, Johnny Carson, Frank Sinatra, the Rat Pack is in the, uh, is in the crowd there. Sinatra's my a, guy. You know, yeah, yeah, Sinatra's everybody's guy, you know. Nah, uh, he's Delco's hey. guy. Anthony Scaramucci, hey. Skyridge Capital. Send me that pic. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Have fun you, in Davos. You got it. You got it, brother. Thank you. Happy New Year. You too.